Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our How to Take Over the World session. It is so nice to see everybody here, and I think this is probably one of our best attended sessions since we kicked off these things going online. So thank you to everybody for giving up your 7 a.m. It's always nice to see those who hit the ground running bright and early in the morning. Um, just a reminder that there will be a playback facility of this available afterwards. So if you do have to drop off and let the real world get in the way, uh, you will be able to pick it up on our YouTube channel. All our previous episodes are also there as well. Very quickly, just a reminder of our purpose as a business. We tackle the twin challenges of access to finance through things like capital raising, enterprise supply development initiatives, DTRC grants and incentives, and getting business funding ready and access to markets, which could include content, communications, PR, business development, and triple BE strategies. Um, as we've started to build in over the last few weeks, we've started to include a tune to get everybody going this week, and we're trying to include a fun fact about it. Uh, for those of you who know, well, because it's been a long week, and I'm pretty sure we're all going to hit the pub this Friday, um, the, we all know the song Closing Time by Semisonic. It's not actually completely about a bar. Everybody thinks it's about a bar that is closing down um, or closing up for the evening. The lead singer is a guy by that, Dan Wilson, and his daughter was actually born three months premature. And he weaves into the lyrics this whole thing about take, uh, take Me Home. He actually talks about his taking his daughter home from the hospital. And you can see it's there, there's other lines say to your brothers or sisters, come, etc. Um, but it's just a fun fact for the day. It's quite a cool Friday song. Um, it has really been a long and exhausting week, but there's something to get you going this week. Uh, just what are we working on this week? Uh, we did a health and wellness activation at the Business Exchange where we were doing presentations on diet and um, importance of movement. That was quite fun, nice little execution. And we posted some of the video playback on social media as well. Um, the new Blossom site goes live in Kuruman on Friday. So Ahmed's been doing the some of the preparation around that. For those who are not familiar with this, it's a micro-franchise model uh, where they do the manufacturing of sanitary pads. Um, and interesting thing, they're going to be expanding into a baby nappy range. Um, but this site went live, the site will go live in the Northern Cape on Friday with an official opening. Uh, Ahmed is pushing hard for any orders that we can get to support this. So if anybody has got enterprise and supply development funding and would like to commit to offtake agreements for this, they'll be aggregated across the sites. And you have the choice of supporting either your churches, your schools, community clinics, et cetera, et cetera. You can reach out to any of the team and they will give you a, they, they will take your order from that perspective. Uh, Samantha is doing recruitment for the guys from SME.tax in conjunction with Edward. Um, they are recruiting 10 new accountants for a new program that's going live next week. So we're quite excited about that. And actually quite fun, we've also been asked to quote on a proposal to do 120 youth jobs in KZN. Uh, with, it's quite a wide, it's quite a big youth employment initiative there. So we've got that on the table and it's looking promising. And I and myself are working on the new SMME facilitation program for Microsoft. It's a five week program supporting entrepreneurs in six different provinces and giving them the skills to be able to open up entry level businesses. Uh, we've been asked to look at a whole lot of offtake agreements for the Yes Hubs in Alex and in Saldana. Uh, that's everything from agriculture through to community feeding scheme. Um, we've put a proposal together and hopefully we'll have some good news on that shortly. Uh, a whole lot of video scripts that we had to do this week. I think we mentioned it last week. We're doing quite a lot of content, particularly ahead of the mining in Darba. Um, so we have put in place, uh, I think we've done five, four or five scripts this week. Um, quite excited. It's lots of work, but it is fun to put together. Uh, the guys from SME.tech, so Kahiso, Edward, Ken, Tyron have done another activation in conjunction with the Sharks uh, Business uh, Center, and we are really enjoying that partnership. We think that there's quite a lot of interesting things that we'll be able to bring out of that as time goes by. Um, just a fun fact uh, or, or a bit of celebration um, for some of you who, who know this or maybe don't know this, Paula was a contributor to this book. It's a textbook actually released by um, a number of the, the academics at Fitz University. 
uh, looking at the lessons that came out of the pandemic and the treatment of public health systems and education systems in South Africa. So I just thought that was a, a nice celebration and that was launched this week. Big lesson from the previous week, and this is, uh, you know, we did the stuff with Amber looking at the um, health activation events are bloody hard work and you have to dedicate a large part of your energy just to getting butts on seats. Um, so don't ever underestimate how much work you need to do to get people to your events. People are, are busy, they are, you, you really have to compete hard to get their attention. So big lesson for the week and we will need to carry that forward going into the next set of events that we put together. Um, some of the things we're watching this week. Um, so for those of you who don't know, there's an organization which, called, which is called BankServe, uh, which puts together a, a number of different data points. But just in terms of interesting thing, what the average take-home salary in South Africa at the moment, if you take all um, employed people across formal employment, average take-home salary is 15,517 Rand. Um, but they do, if you look at that latest survey, show that more and more people are returning to work. So a lot of contract work starting to come through. Um, interest rates went up yesterday, 25 basis points. So if you're carrying a lot of debt, that'll obviously uh, hit you in the pocket. As always, we try and encourage you guys to, to keep your debt low and look off, you know, don't get stuck in a debt trap, particularly with a rising interest rate environment. Uh, Intercausal was at the ASA Investment Conference yesterday. So if you remember back in 2018, the president said he was setting out to raise one trillion rands worth of investment into the country. Uh, there are some cynics about it, but um, just interesting number, uh, 83 investment announcements worth 332 billion rand were announced the, uh, yesterday, uh, just in the current one. So I mean, you can get a sense of the scale of money that is involved. If any of these projects actually come off, they will be transformative to South Africa. Um, I see there's a typo there, it should be rand not dollars. Um, rand against the dollar is strong. Um, I think they're, they're targeting 14 rand 50. Uh, we spoke about it a little bit last week, but it does kind of, uh, you know, I know that there are, there are various factors, but it does speak a little bit to the fact that there is um, positive sentiment towards South Africa relative to the rest of the world. And then just kind of fun one, or maybe an interesting one, um, we always try and identify people that are doing, you know, in the political landscape that are doing interesting things. Um, and for some of you might have, have followed this, there's a guy by the name of Vinklunk Lux, uh, who is driving the, what he calls Operation Dududa, uh, which is basically a township, depending on how you want to place it, uh, township rejuvenation uh, initiative, but he has been challenging, you know, he has been clashing quite a lot with the EFF around um, things like foreigners in South Africa, um, you know, where community policing forums, et cetera, et cetera. He was actually arrested last night. Um, but the reason I just bring it up is just that the, there's often a perception that um, you know, ciphering democracy is all over the show. I think it is healthy when you do, when you have young people coming through and taking ownership of their of their communities it may not always be you know the the idea of a quiet democracy but there's some interesting things happening there and I thought that was just something interesting in a person to to watch before we jump into the presentations any comments thoughts or questions from anybody on the um, on, on the panel and hey, did I miss anything um, I don't think you're missing anything. The only thing is we are also doing some new stuff for the FD Center. And that's the only other thing I think that you could add for me. Yeah, that's um, right. But I think this is really cool. Like, there's actually a lot to celebrate this week. There's been a lot of good news stories that's actually good for the country, and I think it's good for everyone's role as well. Yeah, I think we, it's very easy to be a pessimist. And uh, I know that it's, you know, South Africa is very good at being pessimist, but I do think that nobody's going to build a business on the on the basis of being a pessimist. So let's try and look for some things to be optimistic about. Um, Intercausal raised a hand. Yeah, Intercausal, go for it. Intercausal? I'm not sure she's got audio issues. Um, Sam, do you want to load up your presentation in the meantime? 
store. Um, and also as an exciting thing is that we don't have to wear masks outside anymore. Oh, that's true as well. Yes, the world is changing. How about that? How exciting is that? Am I sharing, Mark? Yeah, you, you should be. Yeah, you should be good to uh, good to share. So I see a comment from Intercausal saying investment conference was very interesting and optimistic. So that's good news. Am I sharing, Mark? You getting there? Looks good. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty, over to you, Sammy. Cool. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Sam Metcalf, and I'm a human capital and client relations executive at the Guzé Show. So I'm currently doing a training with, uh, with the thing at church, and it's supported by the Summit Trek, which is an American organization that does business coaching. And one of the modules that we did is a theory of this theory of essentialism. It is a very interesting topic, so I've decided to present on that. Just a few disclaimers. Um, the stuff I'm talking about today is supported by a book called Essentialism by Greg McEwen. The theory relates to our professional life and the goals we are aiming to achieve in that space. And essentialism is actually quite a complex topic, which I find ironic, but hopefully my insight is enough to convince you to pick up the book and give it a read. So essentialism by definition is the disciplined pursuit of less. Okay, Sam, why would we be pursuing less? Just bear with me. So at the core of essentialism, we see an equilibrium of time. Your time is filled with the constant trade-off of yes and no's. For every single thing you say yes to, you're going to have to say no to a bunch of other things. So for example, there's the CEO. He ended up um, saying yes to almost everything. Stress went up while quality of work started going down. So he tried out an experiment. He started saying no more often. This resulted in his stress going down and the quality of work going up. What do we learn from this? You need to be putting value in your yes and do not be afraid to say no. Consider what you're saying yes to. Your next question is, okay, how do you choose what to say yes to and what to say no to? So looking at the visual, Different efforts yield different results, right? This is your little result thing. Certain yeses lead to better success. As you can see here, higher success when you're putting in the D effort. The, the idea is that because you only have a limited amount of, amount of yes, you should only be saying yes to the things that result in a higher success. You wanna be saying yes to the things in your D range. Your best yes, say yes to the tasks and the projects that will yield the best results. So application of essentialism, explore, eliminate and execute. Explore is looking at the yes aspect of essentialism. So we have escape and look, being intentional about making time to be unavailable and work on the things that require concentration and focus. A simple example would be a content creator who intentionally makes the time in their day to sit down and create content. The success rate will be low if they are just jumping in and out of meetings and then spending their last few hours of the day exhausted trying to design quality work. Do, using your escape time can be a time to look Look at your goals, look at how you're planning to execute them. Look at the past and look at what worked for you and what didn't work for you. Making playtime. There's an expansion of awareness that happens when you enter into a state of play. Play also relieves stress, which is likely the place we all find ourselves in. Also, did you know that a well-balanced amount of playtime has a positive effect on e executive functions like planning and decision-making? Playtime doesn't necessarily have to be going on the draw, getting drunk, whatnot. It can be going fishing, reading, and just spending some time relaxing. We went um, to Dolstrom this weekend, and all of us have just said how this week we've done so well because we just had such a good, relax, relaxing weekend. We've been able to come back so much more productive. Then sleep. We all know the importance of sleep, but in the book, it, it compares your brain and your body to an asset. Sleep will increase the value of your assets. So invest in some healthy sleeping hours. Then select. When people take the time to think, escape, play and sleep, you start realizing what in fact is essential and what are the key efforts contributing to the highest level of success. So if it's not a whole yes, 
then consider whether or not it should be a no. Okay, we know what to say yes to, but what about the no? So this is where the elimination aspect comes in. So clarify, what is the target you're shooting for? When you know what you are aiming for, there will be clarity in what actions will get you there and what actions will not. Dare to say no. This is for the people pleasers. Daring to say no might, might make you worry about your reputation and give you an unpopular vote. However, back, back to the CEO. By saying no, led him to being less stressed and producing a higher quality of work. Always remember that saying no doesn't have to be aggressive. You should make sure that your no is said respectfully, resolutely, and graciously. Saying no takes effort and practice. Which then leads to edit and uncommit. And now uncommit has such a negative connotation because it's kind of comes with this whole thing of like, oh, um, you're not staying, word, staying true to your word. You said you would do something and now you're not doing it. But just hear me out. Once you have clarity on your situation, you sometimes realize you're actually going in the wrong direction. This is when you need to edit. Did you know that subtraction can sometimes mean addition? By removing things out your day that are not adding value will end up freeing you up to make time for things that are adding value and commit to the things that are pushing you in the wrong direction. It may take a bit of energy, but it is worth it in the long run. And limits. Now that you have taken out the non-essentials, it is important to maintain this by limiting yourself. Set boundaries in your work so that you can start living out your plan of action. Okay, cool. So let's live out our plan of action execution. To execute your plan of action, you need a buffer. This should be a deliberate creation of space between your current focus and then your future commitments. Some breathing room will allow you to execute your ideas more effectively so that your effort is falling in that D range. For example, you have a meeting from one to two and then two to three. You should rather make your meeting 45 minutes so that you have a 15 minute buffer between your two meetings. In that 15 minutes, you can debrief properly so that you can execute your obligations or your expectations from meeting one properly. And you can brief yourself on the next meeting. So when you go into your next meeting, you're ready, you're focused, and you can execute that meeting really well. Next is subtract. Remove the obstacles. Imagine your plan of action as steps. Either they can be stairs going upwards or stairs going downwards. Mark, is it easier walking upstairs or downstairs? Downstairs normally. Exactly. You have the ability to remove unnecessary obstacles to ex execute essentialism better in your life. Progress and flow. Create a system in your life where you can record small wins. A simple example would be, I want to run 20 kilometers in six months. This means I consistently need to be running about 30 to 40 kilometers a week. Interesting fact. The more routine something becomes, the easier it becomes, right? This means that when you are doing something consistently, it will become easier, which results in your brain um, making space for more challenging tasks. So by tracking your progress and constantly taking the wins, the quality of your effort will improve. Focus. Focus on what you're doing now with the aim of achieving your, goal, your goals. Consider the past. Considering the past and the future is important, but it is not the focus. The focus is looking at what needs to happen now in order to achieve the little win, which then contributes to the overall goal. So essentially, essentialism. Most people are looking at their energy and they're spreading it out in a whole lot of different directions and they're hardly getting anywhere. Where essentialists take their energy and they push it into the right or into the same and the right direction and they're getting a lot further. How do you do that? By exploration, elimination, and execution. Do we have any questions? Okay, good. Cool, thank you everyone for listening. This is the book, if anyone wants to give it a read and then let me know how it goes. And I think first comment, I think that is probably your strongest presentation you have done since you've ever been with us. So I give you 10 points for that. Well done, Samantha. That is definitely your best presentation you've done by a long Thank way. Um, second comment, I think Raquel will be very, very proud of you. 
to be able to with your with your prezi with your prezi. I think that is a, a she she must be feeling like a proud parent. Um, come again. Beautiful Sam. Well done, girl. That was stunning. There we go. Um, and the third point, I mean, I think this this issue about resting and actually stopping to think. Uh, you know, we're running flat out at the moment. I mean, a lot of us are, I see people sending emails at two o'clock in the morning and, you know, whilst you know, different people are built differently, um, everybody is stretched. And I think it is important to actually learn to say no to stuff. Um, but even I, I was chatting to, uh, I was doing, giving some feedback to Jess on something and just that ability to stop and actually think and actually think about the task that you're doing is incredibly important. And I think, you know, it's a combination of things, but we, everyone is trying to do so much with so few resources. Um, we shouldn't forget the importance of actually stopping resting and actually prioritizing ourselves as well. That, so Sam, great presentation. I don't know if anybody else has got any comments. Cool. Everybody seems to be happy. Well done, Sam. Um, Ed, you're up next. Great presentation, Sam. Thanks, Mark. I think my presentation is also more or less on the same wavelength. I'll just be speaking about how to live a healthier lifestyle in this nine to five life working or as entrepreneurs as well, just being more healthier um, with your lifestyle. Cool presentation, fantastic. So once again, I'm, I'll be just touching on how to be more healthier in a nine to five or as an entrepreneur as well. It's very radical. We sit for like eight, nine hours of the day. And then by the time you, you're you done working or you've completed like the task for the day, you're probably exhausted and don't wanna do anything too strenuous and probably want to rest. And that's how it goes. And that's probably not optimal for to be a human being as well so i'll just be touching on that and small tips you can do just to live a healthier life okay cool so my agenda is why you should be more healthy benefits on being more healthy strategies as well and healthier food options um so if you know me um health is health and fitness is one of the i'm an advocate for that so i would i love to talk about it and unfortunately you're forced to listen to it today and I've done a bit of research into this as just the benefits and the links of health as well in uh, your personal life. So I'll just be st starting things off. I'll just be discussing three myths that are around um, health that you'd find actually quite wrong. So the first one I'll touch on is breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And funny enough, it's not, not that it's not important, but all meals are equally healthy. So anytime you're putting food or energy into your body, that is, a, that is a very important meal for your day. Breakfast just feels more healthy because you're coming from a fasting state and you're breaking the fast. So for example, if you eat at 9, 10 at night and you only eat again at 7 a.m., 7, 8 a.m., that's probably eight, eight, nine hours of not eating at all. So you're breaking that nine hour fast period in your life. So it feels important, but every time you eat, it's quite an important meal for your body. You're getting nutrition, sustenance, and energy from it. Okay, so it's cap. Um, next is exercising is the best way to lose weight. Um, it's not particularly the best way, but it's one of the building blocks into losing weight if that's, what you, if that's your goal. Um, so you need to exercise, sleep the right amount, drink enough water, be in a caloric deficit, quite a lot of other things. Also build muscle at the same time to consume more calories. So there's quite a lot of um, blocks that add to losing weight. If you just exercise, but you don't sleep enough or be in a caloric deficit, you'd actually become very frustrated and you'd lose weight at a very slow rate. So exercise is important, but then there's other things you need to look at as well. So it's cap. Uh, and the last myth is that fats are bad, which is incorrect. Um, we actually have essential fats that we need to cover that we don't produce on our own. So we need to 
eat it. So there's it there. We get most of our fats from plants and also fish, if you didn't know. And just as I was speaking on fats, the actual fat in your body is used as a shock absorber as well. So the fat on your body helps you in, if you like fall down or something or you experience physical trauma in any other way, it, it's like reduces the impact on your overall body. So fat on your body is actually quite essential. It's not just, it's not just there to make you look not nice if you catch my drift. So it's cap as well. So fat's all good for you. You don't be, don't be afraid of them. And why should we be more healthy? I think there's a myriad of reasons why we should be more healthy. Um, and this is a very easy question to actually answer, but essentially it's to live longer, have less chances of uh, chronic diseases, have more energy, just enjoy life a lot more than someone who doesn't live, live healthy. Cool. So here are some strategies, minimal effort just to uh, make your life a lot healthier than it should be. So reducing the amount of junk food you eat, so this includes highly processed foods, deep fried foods, um, less organic foods as well, and foods that are full of sugar, because sugar really gives you a high in energy, immediate high, but then also a immediate down period that leads to a crash. Um, also try go on a walk at least three times a week just to have a release of energy and consume more calories as well. Drink two liters of water. This is the two liters is depending on your body type as well. If you're a very uh, thin, short person, two liters is probably too much for you. Be up and down in the bathroom. But if you're a big, uh, stockier person like myself, I think three, two liters is quite small. And I usually drink three. Um, rest more. Try squeezing a nap in your day, a 30 minute nap just to re energize and just refocus yourself. You'll notice the quality of your nap and energy is over a lot higher and better. Um, as well as after 30 minutes of sitting, try to stand up, stretch, go get some coffee. That's what I usually do at the office with KG. After like an hour of work, we usually stand up, go get some coffee. We actually don't like coffee, but then just for the purpose of exercising and stretching, we get coffee. Um, eat, up, eat from smaller plates. This, is, this also is a tactic to reduce your portions. Um, eat fiber, fiberful breakfasts. So for example, um, it's escaping me. It's the brown one, the Kellogg's one. All bran flakes, yes. So fun fact here that gut health is actually linked to mental health. So the microorganisms that's living in your gut contribute a lot to your mental state. It can cause anxiety or depression. So fiber is one of the main contributors of healthy microorganisms in your gut. And this would actually help your mental state a lot if you're not aware. So yeah. Also another fun, another great place to get fiber is apples as well. Um, wheat bix, all brand flakes, like I mentioned as well. But it'd be great for your gut. Your gut would love it. And studies show as well that one glass of wine a day is, uh, leads to a reduce in heart disease as well. So after a long week, like to, like Mark said earlier, <laughs> we're gonna go to the pub, but it's actually linked to your health. So I advise you, please get some wine today. And these are just healthier food options I have researched. Um, so veggies and fruits are always an amazing source of nutrition as well. Um, foods that are not highly processed. So more that are closer to the more natural states. Almonds, fatty fish. So this includes salmon, tuna, I don't know how to pronounce the next two words in trout. <laughs> Chicken, red meats, berries. Also consider a multivitamin pack. You can get them at this camp. There's some for men and for women. This is just to add up to the nutrition that you're missing that's sometimes not found in a lot of the foods we eat. And personally as well, I just, I don't like labeling foods as healthy or not healthy. I like to label them as um, a lack of some foods have low nutritional value and some foods have high nutritional value, but all of them should have nutrition. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's my presentation just on being a bit healthier in your nine to five. There's a lot more other strategies I, you can dive into, but this is these are the things that you can just start doing today immediately. Just after work, go for a 30 minute walk or have a stretch, have, have a glass of wine tonight eat an apple after this meeting as well, just for fiber. And yeah, thank you. Awesome, thanks, Ed. 
Um, I mean, I, th I think that there's a, a couple of, and, and I know that, you know, we, we all know this theory about eating healthy, living healthy, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, you know, we, we, we hear the message, but it doesn't necessarily sink in. And I mean, it was a, and I think it ties in a bit to what, you know, Sam's presentation as well. But, you know, when we did this health activation at the business exchange, so many people said, I'd really love to attend, but um, I'm too busy to do it. And the, the reality is that most people are becoming slaves to the job that they do. And it is, you'll, you will burn yourself out at some point in time. It is not a, it's, you, you actually do have to sometimes sit back and actually look at these things. I mean, I, I like the whole, um, you know, the whole thing about investing, your, your body is an asset. Um, but, but on top of that, you know, just, just a simple fact. And I mean, we were doing some research for some content that we were putting together and they, they reckon that one out of three people who are currently employed in South Africa are struggling with mental health or workplace stress related issues. And I mean, if you just take this call, the 15 people that are on this call from, uh, just from panelists perspective, and you work through it, one out of three means that five people are, are probably struggling with some form of workplace stress or mental health related issues. And I mean, look, it's not, it's not a perfect sum because obviously different environments, but if you just start to look at it like that, you start to realize how quickly we start abusing our bodies and letting ourselves run into the ground. So just be aware of that. And, you know, the, the, the simple suggestions around eating healthy, exercise, et cetera, don't ignore them. They carry a very real value. So nice pressure, Ed. Anybody else got any comments? Just well done, Edward. And um, I think my favorite part was let's have a glass of wine tonight. You would say, I mean, it's only one glass. You can't keep refilling the same glass, eh? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sam, just get one of those wine bottles with a glass at the top. Then you can just uh, I was going to say, just have a bigger glass. It's fine. <laughs> then you can die. That's, this is that's why we're problem solvers. Exactly. That's why we're problem solvers. All right, everybody. I think it's been a very good session. Well done to everybody. And thank you to the attendees. I'll do some math on this just now, but I think this is the best attended session and best registered session since we, we kicked off. Um, and interesting fact, um, we actually got one of our, one of the presentations I was in yesterday um, or, or one of the meetings that I'd been asked to attend. Somebody had actually sat and watched the, the playback of one of the sessions from, I think, three weeks ago. Um, and, and they were quoting stuff directly out of this. So I think this opening it up has introduced, opened up um, options to talk to other other people and, and it does serve the purpose of, of, of a marketing tool for us. So well done, everybody. I think that's been cool. Uh, good session and we shall have a productive Friday. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Happy Mark. Friday, Thanks, everyone. Happy Friday. Bye, everyone.